Hi guys, welcome back to another tech video. In this video, we will talk about RAM, which is Random Access Memory. Now, before we get started, if you're new here and haven't followed this Facebook page or subscribed to our YouTube channel, don't forget to tap the follow button on Facebook and or the subscribe button on our YouTube channel to see more MCPL content. We bring you interesting tech videos every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Friday. And don't worry, I'll remind you at the end of the video like I do every time. So in this video, we want to answer the following questions. What is RAM and how does it work? So before we dive in, for anyone who's really invested in learning more about the com components that make up a computer, perhaps you want to build your own, um, here are some resources that you can check out. I'll link them in the comments. Now, since we don't have much to cover because this is quite a simple topic, let's get into it. If you shopped around for a computer or smartphone, you may have seen the specification cards next to each device. These cards were in like a table format and they list details about a device's build to help you choose between multiple options. You'll probably see quite a bit of information on these cards and some of it may be important to you, like storage capacity, processing speed, system memory, operating system, screen size, screen resolution, battery life, and so on. And since this video is about RAM, you may see it referred to as system memory. So what is that? The dry definition of RAM is a hardware device that allows information to be stored and retrieved on a computer. RAM stands for random access memory and is also called main memory, primary memory, or system memory, just to confuse you even further. I'll be calling it RAM or system memory while we're together. So in our devices, there's a bunch of different pieces that make the external pieces work. Internal pieces include the motherboard, which is a type of circuit board that holds other important components. Now there are a ton of metaphors that we could use to help understand how a motherboard works with these components, like the CPU, the RAM, the hard drive, the GPU, and other parts of the computer. And so since it's the beginning of our uh, computer hardware portion of the What Is Tech series, I'd like to choose an analogy to kind of stick with as we go through the rest of the series. So let's think of the parts of a computer in an office setting. So the motherboard is the desk in your office or your living room or even at work where whatever you do um, and whatever work you do is done on this desk. It has drawers and slots for papers, folders, snacks, and so on. So where does the RAM fit in? Your RAM is the top of the desk where you actually do your work. It only has so much space and you can only fit so many papers on it at a time. Once you start running out of room, you have to put files, folders, and whatnot away in the desk drawer to come back to later. So RAM works by giving you the temporary space on your computer or smartphone to work on multiple things at once. So on your computer, you can have a browser open um, with five to 10 tabs running. You can have Microsoft Word, a music app, and be on a video call all at once. The apps should work smoothly if there's enough RAM to handle all of that. On your smartphone, you can have Candy Crush, if that's still popular. If it's not, insert popular app here. Um, your email app, messaging app, Amazon, and so on, all open and multitask between them without losing your place. You should be able to add items to your Amazon cart, switch back to add another sentence to the draft in your email, and then switch to replying to a text and pick back up where you left off in your game without losing information, all thanks to RAM. Now, if you didn't have enough system memory, your computer would struggle to keep up with you. Some apps like computer games, Google Chrome, uh, photo and video editing software are memory heavy hitters and they can hog a lot of RAM. So it may feel impossible sometimes to finish your work when your apps start to crash or your computer starts to slow down. Now not having enough system memory is like working on a smaller desk, but you still have the same amount of work. Your workflow will be slower because you have less space available to you. And at that point, you'd have to start saving files in the desk drawer. Now, you may be curious as to why you can't just save things to the RAM since it's supposed to be faster. It's for multitasking. So RAM does not save anything per se. 
It's not a long-term storage unit like your hard drive. It's understandable to confuse RAM and the hard drive since they both deal with remembering where your files and your data are at any given point in time. The difference is that RAM is not saving your data, so it's considered a volatile type of memory. This means that the contents in the system memory are completely erased when the computer or hardware device loses power, or you have to do a hard reset when your computer is unresponsive. Now, there are some features built into certain programs and apps that try to quickly save your work by moving it out of RAM and into non-volatile memory, like your computer's hard drive, where it stays even when the computer is turned off. So let's think of it another way. Now, I'm not one to cook, so I don't, but I've been known to look at a recipe or two. And if you use a cookbook, using RAM is like leaving that cookbook on the counter and referring to it as you need to as you gather ingredients and complete steps. If you didn't have enough counter space to leave the book open and mix your ingredients at the same time, you'd have to close the book each step of the recipe, reopen it, look at the table of contents because you didn't remember the page or number, find the recipe again, do one step, then close the book again, or worse yet, put the book on the dining room table, mix the ingredients on the counter, then go back and forth for the entire recipe. RAM gives you the space to leave the book open and mix the ingredients on the counter. And you remember which step you were on previously, so you know where to go next. So the same works for RAM and hard drives. If your computer kept everything in long-term memory, so on the dining room table, it would be excruciatingly slow to bring all that information back out. So speaking of slow, if you don't have enough RAM, that can contribute to a slower processing speed for your computer. If your processor can't load the information it needs from the RAM fast enough, it has to start bypassing the RAM and pulling that data from the long-term storage or the internet, which will take longer. Now, how much RAM you want or have um, depends on what you do and what type of computer you have. Um, if you need more RAM, on your device. Some motherboards can handle larger sizes of RAM um, if you want to upgrade your computer rather than placing it. But first things first, you may need to know how much you have. So what you can do is on your computer is check to see how much RAM is available to you. Now to do this, um, we're going to start with the Mac first. Now on your Mac, you'll access the, there are two places technically to check for this. You can go up to the Apple menu, and then click about this Mac, and it'll open this little mini window that will give you some um, specifications um, depending on your device. So you'll see the type of device you have, the processor, and then there's a section for memory. So it says memory here is 16 gigabytes, 2133 megahertz, and then whatever this six digit or six character thing is. And then it'll talk about the graphics and then the serial number. And so if you wanted to see how much you were using up at this point in time, so if you want like a real time view of how much you're using, you'll want to go to your menu bar, click go, and then you have a utilities section. And then the very first one is the activity monitor. This is the equivalent of the task manager on the windows. Um, it'll open up to CPU. You want to go to the memory tab and it'll show you which process I think I already have it filtered by yeah which one's taking up the most um, memory right now which is Windows Server and I have Microsoft Teams helper whatever that is I have my email open browser I have Microsoft Word open I also have Teams open I have Finder open and I'm using OneDrive and you can see how much memory these particular apps are taking up um, but if you look at the bottom of the screen, you'll see a little memory pressure section with this like, it's like a Doppler thing. Um, but it says memory pressure is an indicator of the system's ability to meet the memory, re memory requirements of the user's activities. Higher memory pressure indicates that the system is reaching its limits and performance may degrade. Thank you. I'm glad I didn't have to explain that. Um, so you'll see here there's that 16 gigabytes we saw in the about section 
um, list of your physical memory. Right now, I've used up 9.3 gigabytes. I probably should clear my cache files because I have 6.57 gigabytes, um, but it's telling you how much is being used at a given time. So if I start closing some things, let's see. Let's close this. It might not update in real time. Oh, it does. So now you see my memory usage dropped because I closed Outlook. And so if I close Teams, give it a second to update. And you might be able to hear my laptop working real hard. And so each time I close something, I'm using a little bit less memory at a time. So that's kind of one way to kind of see it in real time. Now on to the PC. Now if you wanted to check on your PC to see how much um, RAM you have, you'll open your start menu, open your settings, and then we'll choose system. And from here in system, you'll see things like display, battery, storage, and my first instinct was to go to storage, but that's not right. So you're going to scroll down and you'll see an about um, setting. So here's where you'll get some information. You'll see device specifications, your device name, the processor, and then there's an installed RAM section. So you'll see here in this particular PC, I have 16 gigabytes of RAM. And if I wanted to know how much of that I was using currently, I don't have a lot of apps open right now. Um, but if I go to the task manager, you can get there by either doing control, alt, delete, and choosing task manager, or you can right click on your start menu and choose task manager. And then what it'll do once it finally comes up is it, you'll start in the processes tab. You'll want to click performance. And then it might open to a different uh, filter here where you see there's CPU, memory, disk, Wi-Fi, and GPU. You want to click on memory. And then this will let you know how much memory usage is happening in pretty much real time. So this will give you an idea of I've got this browser open, I've got this open, I've got this open, and right now I'm at like max memory. Okay, that's good to know. Um, so just like on the Mac, if you start closing things, you, of course, will gain more memory. So that way your computer can use it for something else. But that's how you check on your Mac and on your PC. All right, that's what I have for you today. So like I mentioned earlier, nice and simple. So thanks for sticking with me as we learn about RAM. So watch out for more videos from us. The next video in our What is Tech series will be about CPU, so the central processing unit. Come and learn about what CPU is and how it works for you. Okay, have a good day. And we want to thank you for watching. Follow us to find more videos just like this. Our page on Facebook is MCPL360. We're here every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Friday. And if you miss us on Facebook, you'll still find these same videos on our YouTube channel at MCPLMO. Find our consumer technology playlist. Have a good day.